if you just say something's, you know, trillion, trillion times bigger than something else, it's very difficult. So you need to come up with analogies which people can relate to. And, you know, you have to play around. So one of the, uh, you know, one of the reasons why astronomers use light years as a distance measurement is time is something people sort of understand. So when I lead off with one of my talks and I want to explain distances, and this works for adults, but it does not work for small children, uh, I will start off and say, you know, speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. That means that light goes around the Earth seven and a half times in a second. So people know what seven and a half times around the Earth is. It's a, it's a long ways. So then you say, well, the moon is one and a half seconds away. You know, the sun is eight light minutes, so eight minutes. The nearest star, which is when I'm in Australia, I will often ask the audience to say, who here knows where the nearest star Alpha Centauri is in the sky? And inevitably, two out of 500 people will know. It's the second brightest star in the sky in the southern hemisphere, and it's the nearest star. And that's something people are like, wow, that star, you know, they're excited. That's 4.3 letters. Then, I'll use an analogy just to get the ideas across. So I will say, for example, imagine the sun is a basketball, and Alpha Centauri, which is a star very similar to the sun, is another basketball. Imagine I'm here, and I want everyone to think about where the sun would be relative to here. And if, you know, Alpha Centauri is a basketball, then the sun, is in Australia. That's the scale model. And people are like, wow, that is a, wow, there's a lot of empty space there. So you establish that idea. And then I'll go out into time, and you know, when I get to go through and I show this galaxy, this is a galaxy whose light st started before the Earth was formed 4.6 billion years ago. You know, with kids, you might say dinosaurs or whatever, although, the, as I said, the, my experience is for 14-year-olds, this works, but for the 11-year-old, it doesn't work. Uh, so those types of analogies are very important. When you talk about, you know, supernovae, I will say, you know, these things explode. And so instead of saying it's a one with 43 zero watts, I'll say that. I'm going to say that's five billion times brighter than the sun. Or to think about it, when you go see the Milky Way, see all those stars, a supernova is, adds up to everything in the galaxy, all the galaxies' light. Uh, so you need to try to get the size rather than just the numbers. Um, for kids, if I want to do size, I will go out and I will do the scale model. I will go through and say, all right, let's do the solar system. So we had the transit of Venus uh, in 2011 in Australia. You couldn't see it here. So. Uh, I had a bunch of Six. Did you? Yes. Yes. Oh, you had the one, in, not the last one, the one before that. Transit of Venus, no? No, you have both of them. Well, the, the first one completely, and the second one only just that time. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, I was thinking, yeah, yeah. we got the first one, we had both of them completely. So, uh, anyway, so for the transit of Venus, I was trying to explain to the sixth and fifth graders. So there I went, got a big beach ball, and then I, we marched out with a tape ruler where Venus was, and Venus was a, a P, and then we went where the Earth was, and I showed people how you move around, the P moves in front of the star, and that's how big it's gonna be, to get that into there. So that's something they can relate to. That works really well with people as well, uh, but for kids, you really need to get it out of numbers into something they can visualize. And then if you wanna do a galaxy, you have to show them, well, Here's the galaxy. You just show the Milky Way full of stars. And then you zoom out, show that's what a galaxy looks like. And then you can say, here's a galaxy, and then we're going to go get another pizza, and we're going to move it out. And the galaxy is actually relatively close, usually across the room. Try to do things like that that they can relate to. It's really important to give analogies as best you can to things that people experience in their lives, in their everyday life. And 
the challenge is to do it in a way that isn't silly or trite. So many times the analogies are, they're, I don't know, they're kind of, you, you listen to them and when you read them you're like, uh, but it just sort of seems long. So you need to have a way of expressing them in a way that seems poetic rather than like McDonald's. You know, it, it ha there's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an art, and you gotta, you gotta try. You know, whenever I try to do these things, I'll try it out on people. I'll, I'll see what how they react and see how my kids react to it, and then I'm always thinking new ideas uh, and trying them out. And you know, like if I'm giving a talk and I have a new idea, I'll try it and see the audience reaction. And then I'll try the way I normally do it and see the reaction. And sometimes, most of the time, it doesn't work as well as the original, but occasionally it's better. So then I can adopt that in the future. So you have to sort of do trial and error. Okay. Like when I'm giving a talk, I go back and I think of talks I saw when I was eight. And I think what was interesting to me, what wasn't interesting to me. Or when I'm, you know, out watching a biology talk, which, you know, I want to know what's interesting and what's not interesting. And there's lots of mistakes you can make. Like, for example, in microbiology, which has replaced physics as the area that does the absolute worst talks in, in science. And that's because they give acronyms to everything. So it's the, you know, the T3 N7 gene and you're like, that means nothing to me. And I said, no, but I told you what it is. And I said, yes, and you've done 27 other things. And I've got all these T and 3, 7 talking to Q47, 6, and you just have no idea what's going on. So they gotta, they gotta tell a story that has names that people can remember and things. So astronomers are very, I think, quite good at doing this, relatively speaking. So although astronomy is challenging, it's in some sense less challenging than other areas because it is, I think, opens itself more to um, analogy and to comparisons rather than someone who's doing solid state physics, for example, which go try to communicate solid state physics, Bose Einstein condensates. Good luck. <laughs> That's hard.